Hello, my friends. Today, we are going to be talking about Agile in Government, part three. We've been covering Agile in Government for a while, and today we're going to talk about certain myths in Agile. This is based on the Agile Assessment Guide. It's a free publication from the U.S. government. Highly advise you to take a look at the link on the screen, gao.gov. Go there, download this. It's a brilliant read. I want to give a shout out to my buddy, Scrum Bob, who pointed me in the right direction to know that this document even existed. Scrum Bob is a really phenomenal guy that has done training with our organization in the past, and he was part of the development team that put this together. Let's talk about the first myth. Agile does not require any documentation. <laughs> Haven't you heard this before? People quote the manifesto incorrectly, saying, oh, you don't even need to do any documentation. Agile people are just cowboys. It'll never work here. That is a big fat lie. The adaptive and iterative nature of Agile places less emphasis on the need for documentation when compared to waterfall development methods. But that does not mean that no documentation is required. I often remind people, it says individuals and interactions over. The word is over. The word is not instead of. So it's individuals and interactions over processes and tools. We place a greater emphasis on the individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working product over comprehensive documentation. We're not saying documentation is bad or it's not used in the world of Agile. That is a big lie. So going back to what we have on the screen here, it reads, a waterfall development results in detailed documentation at the end of each phase, and the program requirements are not expected to change much over time. However, elements of the program continuously evolve as additional information becomes available and customer needs are further defined. As a result, agile programs use an appropriate level of documentation. It's not no documentation, it's an appropriate level of documentation at the end of predefined time box periods in the agile development cadence. For example, the iteration, release, or other major milestone as defined by the program. For those of you new to this language, we also use the word sprint in place of iteration when we're talking specifically about Scrum. In addition, in some cases, an agile approach might replace more formal documentation with information embedded in program tools. So, Agile does not require any documentation. That is a myth, a big lie. Second myth, Agile does not require planning. Oh my goodness. I always laugh at this one because in the world of Agile, you plan. I guarantee you, you plan more than you've ever planned, more than you will ever plan in the world of predictive. Think about it. In the world of predictive, we plan, yes, 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 upfront a whole lot. But in the world of Agile, think about it. If you are planning daily, doesn't that account for a boatload of planning? You're planning in your daily scrums. You're planning in those meetings that you have with your team members daily, whatever you call them, whether you're in the world of Agile, in Scrum, or you're in the world of Agile in a different framework, you know you plan daily. For those of you that are not in the world of Agile, let it be said, we plan daily. We plan frequently, not just daily. We plan at different levels. We plan at the strategic level. We plan at a release level. We plan at a daily level. We plan at the sprint level or in an iteration level. We are planning around the clock. So for anyone to say there's no planning in Agile, <laughs> Agile does not require planning. Those Agile people can't stand them. They're just cowboys. Haven't you heard? Well, I've heard that. And I just laugh because I am very passionate, very, very passionate. As much as I am in any other framework, method, or idea in the world of Agile, as I am in, let's say, predictive, because I have studied both. And I realized that what is worth doing is worth doing well. If you're doing what we would say is more predictive planning, good. Do it predictively, but be agile in your thinking. If you are working in an agile fashion, go all out. Don't 
call what is not agile agile don't be deceitful see there's some firms that think they're being agile but they're not they're still stuck in a very predictive world and they're doing it horribly by using a lot of dangerous methods and frameworks for scaling i'll talk more about that later that will be for another day let's go back to our slide here and it reads as with any approach planning is a vital aspect that will greatly diminish the effectiveness of a successful implementation if not done appropriately waterfall development conducts extensive planning up front while agile spreads planning activities for example that specific functionality will be delivered when more evenly throughout the program life cycle. High level planning is completed at the beginning of an agile program and is continuously elaborated on throughout the program as new information becomes available. So let's stop right there and think about it. What exactly are we talking about? Now, I know a lot of times you don't hear the word agile release planning spoken about, but we should talk about release planning because it is something. We could plan a release at a high level we could develop a vision we could develop a roadmap that is more visual and shows you the spread over time but as you begin to get more into the nuts and bolts of the work you are going to have to break it down from the roadmap level down into you could look at it at the features level you could then look at it at the uh, going even into the story level we plan at different levels so for someone to say you don't plan in agile is false very incorrect so continuously plan continuous planning allows a program to start much more quickly and make adjustments to the customer's need as new information becomes available in the world of agile we plan enough to be able to get moving and we plan some more we plan, we deliver, we plan, we deliver, or we plan and we build. We don't necessarily have to deliver every single iteration. We could choose to hold that increment until we have a sensible amount of functionality that can be released. Myth number three, agile does not require any oversight. Within an agile approach, the team members working on the program have autonomy over decisions about how to meet the needs of the customer. However, most government organizations will find it challenging to allow teams complete autonomy due to reporting and accountability requirements. Let's just throw in the word regulatory. There are certain regulatory clauses that must be obeyed even in the world of Agile. As a result, organizations transitioning to Agile may need to modify their governance practices. This includes incorporating clearly defined parameters, also called guardrails, within which the team is free to make decisions and a clearly defined fast moving governance process to make decisions that are outside the team's control. And there's absolutely nothing wrong in that, but you find this myth of the team being cut loose to be wild and crazy. That is not the case in the world of Agile, there is still some governance protocols at higher levels that need to be obeyed. It could be regulatory, it could be peculiar to just the organization itself, but there's still oversight. There is, of course, massive, massive accountability at the team level. Now, what happens in the world of Agile instead of a belly button accountable project manager, that goes away and you have the team. The team is accountable and responsible for a lot that goes on. And that is not to say there's no governance at higher levels. There is, but the team is given the environment and support they need to get the job done. Moving on to our final one for today. Myth number four, agile works only in co-located environments. Well, hopefully the crazy pandemic has proven to people that agile works whether you are co-located or whether you are geographically dispersed, whether you are in a loose matrix, so to speak. Loose matrix just means you are not tightly located. In other words, you're not co-located. So if you're geographically dispersed in a loose matrix, can agile work? Yes. 
For any program, it is almost always better off for its participants to be co-located, yes, 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 but it's not always possible. Frequent human interaction is a necessary element of Agile, but is also necessary when employing waterfall development methods. Furthermore, a lack of co-location can be a serious impediment if a program is poorly managed. However, distributed programs can still succeed. As is true for any program type, and bear in mind, this is government speaking in this Agile assessment guide. So when you hear the word program, don't get scared and don't get bent out of shape. We're just talking about work endeavors. So for any work endeavor, distribution calls for careful management and awareness. What needs to be executed differently when some team members are not in the same location? For example, there are many tools available that allow for close communication between team members who are distributed throughout various locations. We could do remote pairing. We could use a fishbowl window. We could just open up our Zoom calls all day long for us to see into each other's worlds. There are many ways these days of coping with geographically dispersed teams. And that, my friends, is the end of part one, debunking these agile myths. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next episode. Take care and bye for now.